When we ask the question, should mathematicians be more practical or should physicists be more rigorous? What we're really touching on is this deep tension between two communities that rely on the same language, mathematics. On one side, we have physicists, who often care more about describing the natural world quickly and effectively. Physicists can band or even skip formal justifications when they want to arrive at an answer that works practically, because that's all that matters to them. And then, on the other side, we have mathematicians. Mathematicians demand rigor at every step, because they want to make sure that no argument will collapse later on in the logical chain of implications. The approach of both sides can be justified, but when they are both trying to tackle similar problems with this sort of conflict of interests, mathematicians and physicists tend to disagree very strongly with each other, to say the least. Let's start with rigor. Rigor is not something that mathematicians impose just because they are annoying. It is the absolute foundation of mathematics. Rigor is exactly what stops entire subjects from falling apart. Without it, we could very well make assumptions that feel intuitive, but are actually completely false. And from sloppy assumptions, we could derive results that actually are wrong and mislead many people. A classic example of this is from the 19th century, when many mathematicians believed that continuous functions were differentiable almost everywhere because intuitively, that's how most functions they dealt with behaved. This idea felt true, especially for the physicists, because continuity and differentiability were almost synonyms. But then, later on, we found counterexamples like the famous Weierstrass function, which is a function that's continuous everywhere, but differentiable nowhere. And it completely destroyed the initial assumption. So the entire framework of analysis had to be re-examined, and that's what happens when we trust our intuition too much without demanding rigor. We end up like building a castle on sand. Physicists tend to fall into this trap. There are so many historical examples of physicists using mathematics in a sloppy way. They treat divergent series as though they converge or swap limits without explaining and showing why they did so. Sometimes this sloppiness works just fine and leads to predictions that even match experimental data. But in other times, this sloppiness creates confusion or even mistakes that takes us decades to fix. So yeah, it is tempting to admire how elegant intuition is in physics, but we absolutely need rigor to stop us from falling into these traps. And in this sense, yeah, physicists should be more rigorous, at least to the point of understanding where their arguments stand on firm ground and where they are clearly stretching things. An example would be the Dirac delta function. This function, if you even want to call it that, it's not actually a function in the mathematical sense. It's this weird object that's zero everywhere, except at a single point where it's infinite. But the total integral is somehow one. I mean, very weird. Physicists used it like a normal function, because it gave them the answers they needed. But mathematicians were like, wait, wait, what even is this thing? It wasn't until way later that the rigorous theory of distribution was developed to give the Dirac delta a proper mathematical definition. So the intuition came first, and it worked, but it was a mess, and somebody had to clean the mess. If you guys are enjoying this content, please do not forget to like the video and to subscribe to the channel. This really helps us. In quantum mechanics, the Dirac delta is used all over the place like in representing point particles or the probability density of a particle being exactly at some position x prime. It shows up in things like the orthonormality of wave functions, where you'll see something like this. This tells you that the position eigenstates are orthogonal, which means that the result is zero if x is different from x prime. But when x equals x prime, the expression blows up to infinity, even though, in a way, that still makes the math work, because the delta function is normalized, which means that its integral over all space is 1. So when we measure the particle at position x prime, we have 1 or 100% certainty of finding it there. Even though the delta isn't a function in the traditional sense, it gives us some very powerful predictions, because it lets physicists to calculate things like quantum measurements that completely match experimental data. It worked beautifully. But here's the problem. Let's say that you have a wave function like this. This wave function doesn't represent a real, physical particle by itself. It spreads out infinitely across space and cannot be normalized. If you want to normalize a function, we would need to impose this condition. In other words, the integral over all space of the squared magnitude of the wave function has to be equal to 1, 
meaning that the total probability of finding the particle somewhere is 100%. Let's try to normalize it real quick. So the first thing we can do is pull out of the integral this constant, and then we see that what remains inside is just 1. In conclusion, we found that the squared magnitude of the constant a times infinity equals 1. That's a contradiction. That's just wrong. The integral diverges for any non-zero values of a. Even if we try to set a equals 0, the wave function would be just 0 everywhere, which means there isn't even any particle to begin with. So this wave function is not normalizable. But it is still useful in theory, because we can use it to build more realistic localized wave packets, and that's exactly where the delta function comes in. A wave packet is a localized quantum state that is formed by the superposition of many wave functions. If we compute the expression psi sub k star of x times psi sub k prime of x, which is the probability density, so the likelihood of finding the particle at position x, and then we integrate it over x, we get the Dirac delta. Psi star is the complex conjugate of the wave function, so we just change the sign of the imaginary part. These two wave functions are orthogonal. Now, try to catch my logical mistake. Let me write these wave functions explicitly. Hmm, I know from distribution theory that this is the identity corresponding to 2 pi times delta. So I guess I can write it this way. Now I divide both sides by delta, and we find this value for the squared magnitude of the constant. But wait a second, when k equals k prime, these two expressions are the same. And therefore we just found a normalization constant. Basically we just normalized the same wave function that earlier we said was non-normalizable. This is just wrong, and that's precisely the danger of being sloppy. The Dirac delta is not a function, but a distribution, and we cannot divide a number by a distribution. Intuitively, a distribution is a rule that tells you what the result of an integral should be, not the value a function takes at a point. Instead of asking, what's the value of delta of x at x equals zero, you gotta ask, what happens when I integrate delta of x against another function? A distribution is an object that only makes sense inside an integral, acting on a test function, which is a smooth and well-behaved function. If you guys enjoy our content, one of the best ways to support us is by becoming a member of the channel. We really appreciate your support. Let's get back to the video now. Okay, now that I've made my point about the dangers of sloppiness, let's turn to mathematicians. Let's be honest, if physicists can sometimes be too loose, Mathematicians can sometimes be way too strict, but let's have Sophia talk about it. Okay, well, some mathematicians are so obsessed with definitions, axioms, and all of this precision that they forget why they were using this math in the first place. These are the kind of people that, when they get a new idea presented to them, interrupt and say, wait, wait, wait but is this over here fully defined? Or what about this teeny little obscure edge case that nobody really cares about, but for some reason this person does? And all of this pickiness comes before even understanding the main idea. And this kind of hyper-rigidity is something that can prevent us from exploring, which is something extremely important in the beginning of this idea. A lot of times, physicists come to new mathematics precisely because they didn't focus on the rigor. But they try and brainstorm ideas that are only partially defined, and they do it using intuition and practical necessity. And yes, later mathematicians do need to come in and clean up the mess. So rigor is absolutely necessary, but at the right moment. We have to take initial risks because without them, many areas of mathematics might not have come to exist at all. So rigor is essential, but sometimes it's an obstacle when it's applied too early and too harshly. And I have just the right example to show that. A proper and rigorous framework for the delta function came only in the 1950s, when a French mathematician named Laurent Schwartz developed his theory of distributions. But physicists had already spent about two decades using this mathematically undefined object to make correct physical predictions in quantum mechanics. So in hindsight, if physicists had listened to the mathematicians' objections and just waited until the delta function was made rigorous first, and then ended up using it only afterwards, then quantum mechanics would have been developed much slower than it has been. Who knows if we'd even understand as much about nature as we do today. And all of this is thanks to the risk-taking spirit of physicists. 
they didn't really care about what the delta function was. They just really cared that it worked. So where does this leave us? As is true for most things in life, the answer lies in the ability to find the right balance. Rigor is necessary, but its importance depends in the context you find yourself in. You should understand the rigor enough to know where the gaps are. You need to be aware of their existence, but at the same time, you can't let rigor paralyze you. Most times, the intuitive insight comes first, and then rigor comes later. This is what we tend to see in history. Physicists and even applied mathematicians tend to push with bold leaps of intuition. And pure mathematicians solidify that foundation to make sure that those leaps can be trusted. If you'd like to be the first to receive updates about new courses and books, sign up with your email address on our website. Link in the description. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.